USFL Picks Week 8 edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Bet $50 at WinBet and get $200 in free bets. Bet big. Win bigger with WinBet. Download the WinBet app now or visit WYNNBet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by Sleeper. You already play fantasy on Sleeper, but now you can win cold, hard cash with their over-under game. Just head to sleeper.com slash SGP on your phone to join the SGPN group, and Sleeper will automatically match your first deposit up to $100. That's sleeper.com slash SGP. And make sure to download the SGPN app for all of our free picks and podcasts. Welcome everyone Ooh. to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. What's happening? Crame dog. Oh, uh, just another day live from the bunker, Sean. Yeah. Bunker time. And we're talking USFL with Colby Dan, AKA the database. What's up Colby. Your guys' lighting is so much better. I look like a uh, like Sean Patrick Flannery in powder. <laughs> Very deep powder reference. Uh, if you if you were betting the over on powder references, I think you just cashed that at one. Oh man, what a uh, what a week in the USFL because nobody circles the wagons like the Philadelphia Stars. You guys thought the gamblers would pull it off. I walked you through the case, how the gamblers, they always get up big. Even this time it's like, oh no, no way the gamblers can blow this one. They blew it. And admittedly, as much as I hate the blob is the blob on the heater, Ryan. I, I, I mean, there has to at least be an investigation since the blob, uh, did a little vacationing with you down in Mexico. <laughs> uh, they have been fired, so who knows? Who knows what they what what kind of uh, medical items were were brought back from Mexico out of country? I don't know if it was a TB twelve situation, but well, I do think Blob stone. Blob has quote unquote injected life into the Philadelphia Stars. You, you know what we got to start doing, guys, is just not out thinking ourselves here because Jeff Fisher is Jeff Fisher. We yes. saw that when he attempted like a fifty eight <laughs> yard field goal. Instead of kicking it, punting the ball up three, he tries like a 58-yard field goal, right, which then gives the other team the ball right there when they miss, and they go right down, and with 10 seconds left, they push the game to overtime where we can't cover first USFL overtime game. But then <laughs> then Sumlin, blows, Sumlin gives up 22 in the fourth, <laughs> right? Classic Sumlin. They were up at halftime again, and then Kirby Wilson just the oh ultimate. Oh, my God. The ultimate, he's, he's, at least he's consistent. I need to stop trying to like say, oh, well, this team, you know, they're going to figure it out this week. No, we can count on all three of these things happening every week. What am I doing? I'm improving this. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm still at a loss for words with Kirby Wilson. Like, I, I mean, the, the Maulers did cover the 12 and a half points, but God damn it. They should have won that game. <laughs> they had so many. I mean, they had a couple, uh, an interception almost for a touchdown. Uh, and really you just can't let that quarterback throw on th on like obvious passing downs. It's very clear. Um, Vad Lee or whatever his name well, is just, and you bench him for, they just went down and score a field goal, right? Then you bench him cause you didn't like his body English. What the fuck? Oh, wait, body English. Are you even body language? Yeah, I'm sorry. Body language, same thing, right? <laughs> I don't know. I I know I got what you're going for, but I I don't know if I've ever heard well, of body English. Sean, not to pull back the SGPN curtain too far, but uh, to Colby, there is only one language, and that's English. So, well, and and you know, Ryan, it could be uh, we're we're doing this one remote, and maybe there's something with his connection. Do I still have a list? So I don't know if. <laughs> Colby's uh Colby's lisp filter seems to get put on anytime we are remote to the point that Ryan like dead serious looked me in the eyes and goes, wait, 
has he had a lisp the entire time and we just never noticed it? Like we, we had a serious discussion of that's how much Ryan is on the side of technology. Anytime there's a technology issue, he's always like, well, the person's wrong. Clearly the robots would never let us down. When I, when I went and got married last October and I was at my, my brother's house, his wife was saying that probably 30 times. Do you still have a lisp, Colby? Do you still have a lisp? <laughs> oh, that's man. messed up. Well, and we, you know, hopefully you got a lot of uh, spirits and alcohol. I'm just sipping that beautiful whiskey you guys gave me for Christmas. <laughs> I feel like All we got to go to remote more often because like, didn't I also no. say, like, we'll eat your ass for lunch? Yes. Well, yeah. Colby, Colby, when he's out on his own, uh, things get a little wonky. Oh, listen to that sound. That's football sound. USFL, NFL right around the corner. You know where you can bet on those NFL futures over at winbet.com. Download the win betting app. Bet $50, get $200 in free bets. Are you kidding me? And another uh, great promo from WinBet here. Between now and the end of July, every $500 you bet on sports or in the casino, you can get entered to win the ultimate fantasy football draft experience at the Encore Beach Club, including a two night stay at Win Resorts. For you and your entire league, multiple entries are allowed. Uh, you know, so basically, if you wager a thousand bucks, you got two entries right there. You have between now and the end of July. Again, download that Win Betting app, or just head over to WinBet.com. Bet big, win bigger with WinBet. Offer subject to change. Terms and conditions at WinBet.com. Must be 21 or older and present in the state. We'll play through when that's available. If you're someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1-800-522-4700. USFL Week 8. Here we go. Maulers, Generals. The Generals lay in nine. And, uh, of course, you can bet on all these on-win bets. So they, the lines post a little late. Uh, but um, great, great, easy to uh Easy to get down on that on that uh, USFL action. Generals laying nine minus four twenty five, total sitting at forty two and a half. I mean, you know, Pittsburgh did cover this uh, twelve and a half, so they've shown at times the ability to cover a big number. But I think that was a that was a crushing loss for the Maulers. Not only do they have no confidence in their quarterback situation. I think they really have to be questioning their coach. It is, it's just a complete disaster. And their defense isn't horrible. Like I, I thought their defense played a pretty decent game. All things considered that they were getting essentially zero from the offense. Um, you know, that being said, I, I think you have to take the generals here, Ryan. I know you've not been taking the generals out of uh, some sort of some sort of, you know, weird jinx thing. The generals have clinched the postseason bar. So I don't know. They, I guess they don't have anything to play for, but again, these guys, they want to play professional football. Like you can't really, if I was a starter on the generals, I'm like, dude, I'm trying to get some tape going. I'm trying to, you know, maybe get a call to a real football league. So uh, they, they continue to pound the rock, but Ryan, what are you doing here? Oh, there's no, there, what do you mean clinched? There's no resting in this league. Like you said, there, the, this is just an audition for the, I know the spring football uh, enthusiasts will be angry with this, but this is nothing more than a, a an audition. So yeah, obviously they want to get the tape out there. And again, what are we going to talk about? The generals have been one of the few good teams in this league, continue to be a good team. Pissed. We didn't lock them up last week, Colby. We really screwed that, that pooch. We got excited with the breakers. And now you have a situation where while we like the Maulers catching a lot of points last uh, week, you're right. The coach sucks. The team sucks. They're 100 to one to win a league with eight teams. They're 100 to one to win <laughs> a really... league with half the league makes the playoffs and there's only eight teams and you're 100 to one. Uh, you failed. You should be firing the coach. Like I get it. Um, you know, maybe Kirby was just the uh, the plant uh, to create a little buzz in the off season by firing a guy due to his code of conduct. Uh, but team's been trash. Uh, he's been in the way. And the Generals are the best team in the league, period. Uh, period. I'll say it. Eight to one, I got the future, Sean. Still holding that in my pocket. Well, right. Minus can... nine scares me, though. It, it's a big number, but I'm going to take it because I think this is a ground and pound situation. Colby, what's the latest on my man, uh, DeAndre? 
Uh, you know, I he's out indefinitely. I know that, but I, I haven't seen what, what 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 they're calling for as far as when he'll be back, if he'll be back. Another thing, did we he gotta, get cut? No, he's still he's he's mm. off. But K- Kavante Turpin went down last week as well, and that guy's uh, you know, this is a guy that we've talked about that I I said should be on the New York Jets. Um, this guy, uh, it, it, we'll see what his status will be, but he missed a big chunk of the game. Looked like he had some sort of a hit pointer or something. All right. Well, yeah. Uh, also, also worth mentioning. I mean, the Pittsburgh Maulers offense was dog shit, and the Generals are leading the league in points allowed at one eighteen. So I know laying two scores in the USFL seems crazy, but I think this is one of the times where we got to do it. Colby, what what are you doing here? Yeah, I think I look. I I, I get it. I took the uh, the Maulers last week and that cashed, but now knowing Vad Lee got benched for Reggie Rivers from uh, Slippery Rock University. <laughs> He's only had six or seven practices. I'm sorry. Give me give me the generals. Uh, to, I'm laying the points. Yeah, I mean, there's there's really no case to be made for this smaller team, uh, especially at nine. And and I I would find this and lock it up now because I, I, I imagine as we get closer to the Friday night kickoff here, uh, 5 o'clock Pacific, I, I think this line – Closes goes, double digits. Yeah, it goes north of ten, and and you know Slippery Rock is is super west in Pennsylvania when Sean wants nothing to do with defending it when you uh, take a shit on it, Colby. So, <laughs> oh yeah, come on, that's not real Pennsylvania. That's more Ohio. Moving over to the New Orleans Breakers, uh, catching three and a half points against the Birmingham Stallions, aka our our Stallions. Although, uh, man, you know, ended up going against them because they were laying the gigantic number. And I thought the Maulers were a live dog. Our boy Shark Dog uh, was out in that game, continues to be out. I'm not sure if he's going to be playing uh, this week. Breakers got that overtime victory over the Panthers because, of course, the Panthers, Jeff Fisher, figure out ways to lose. The Stallions have clinched the playoffs already. And uh, Stallions, Stallion's best turnover margin in the league at plus five, uh, Victor Bolden. I think he's, you could make a case, he's been the best player in the league, leads the USFL in all-purpose yards with 1,023. He had a beautiful, like, um, over-the-shoulder catch. He, he really, I think, if people ask us, and I mean by people, one person, <laughs> who do you think is going from the USFL to the NFL? I think my first pick would be Victor Bolden. He's done a great job of tracking the ball. Uh, Breakers coming off winning two in a row. Uh, this one's a little tough for me to handicap because Sloter's had moments where he looks all right, but then he's also been kind of banged up. Kramer, what are you doing? I mean, I I think the big take the big takeaway for lot from last week for me is that maybe the Stallions aren't great. Yeah, um, they didn't. They didn't look as dominating as they've looked previously, and they still haven't lost a game. It's that weird thing you see it sometimes in like college basketball, where you almost want to lose one uh, before the tourney, and and maybe the Stallions team qualifies for that. If you've been listening to the USFL Gambling Podcast, guys, uh, I told you, Generals are the best team in the league. They were better when they played the Stallions in week one. They severely outgained them, just couldn't make field goals, didn't go for a fourth down and one. Stallions are decent, but I I definitely have some questions about them, too. I'm on the Breakers, guys. I think the Breakers are, are, uh, you know, they've already played once. This is you get in three and a half. So even even if it's a close game, you got the hook. Uh, Slaughter, Slaughter Saturdays are a real thing, guys. Give me, give me the breakers plus three and a half. Well, and it, uh, it, it was weird. Like he wasn't playing the full game. It seemed like they were rotating. What, what's your take on the quarterback situation, Colby? Are we, is Slaughter a full go? I think he's a full go. I mean, I know he has a pretty nasty groin injury, but I think with every coming day, he's getting more healthier. <laughs> so, <laughs> when to come. <laughs> Uh, but Kyle Smith, Coley's got the inside scoop on Slaughter's groin. Kramer, yeah. don't don't step on him when he's telling us this. <laughs> uh, uh, do you, do you think it might have? What's that? You, sorry, Colby. Do you think it might have been an incident with Shark Dog that uh, injured the groin? <laughs> yeah, both have been out since then. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, um, <laughs> a mid body collision. Uh, yeah, I'm. I guess I'm with you. I'm going to take the three and a half. I, I don't know. You know, Bolden's look great, but there's been some issues with the Stallions quarterback. Like 
uh, quarterback play has not been consistent there. Not been amazing with the breakers, but I also think the breakers could easily backdoor this too. And we see this, especially with like the two and going for two and going for three um, and some kind of late comeback. So I, I I'm with y'all. I'll take the, I'll take the breakers catching three and a half Kramer. What's the play here? Uh, well, I, I think, you know, when you, when you think about it, the, the breakers have lost to the, the quote, good teams, the stallions and the generals have been a problem for the breakers and, and the rest of the league really hasn't. And so like, is this a moment where they take a step up, you know, a groin, uh, you know, as someone who used to be athletic himself, a groin is definitely a limiting uh, injury. So even, uh, you know, a 70% groin is going to create some problems, especially think about it when you throw, you're torquing the middle of that body, your junk's involved. You want to have that supreme control over your core muscles. I certainly think he's going to perform uh, lower than 100%. Uh, that being said, Stallions do need to lose a game. The Stallions have been a team kind of trend. You kind of scroll through their schedule, and it's littered with – you know, close performances against other good teams and, and they take care of the business when, when they play the bad team. So they seem prime for a loss, even if they, it's not like a manufactured, Hey, we don't want to be undefeated. We need to lose a game before the postseason. And the only team that's going to do it is this new Orleans breakers team. So, you know what? I, I, I keep regretting not, not leaning into this, the slaughter Saturday angle. And, you know, we have it here. So let's play it. He, he said, Supreme control, Sean. Like, yeah. Supreme control. It sounds like a Steven, Steven Seagal flick or something, right? Uh, Supreme I just, control. Yeah, like look, ma, no hands. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right, we're gonna move on to the second half of the games. Before we do that, shout out Sleeper Fantasy. Oh, right, we already we're already uh, in the works getting our reviving our Sleeper a Dynasty League. Gonna be drafting some rookies, but not only. Are we picking some rookies, but also picking some winners over on sleeper and their sweet, sweet player prop parlays. You can uh, put some nice over unders together Win as much as 20 X all the way to uh, X all the way up to 20 X. I think the sweet spot there is those like three team player props on our NBA finals preview podcast gave out our picks for those. So you want to check that out. And they just added baseball. Best part is 100% deposit bonus up to $100. All you got to do is go to sleeper.com slash SGP. That's sleeper.com slash SGP. John, yes. raise your hand if you hit a uh, five and a half to one uh, little over under parlay last week. Well, I hit I hit one a little bit. Uh, not last week. We- <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that also sounds like sign, I also signed my wife up and I put one in her name that hit. She was all of a sudden real interested in like rebounds <laughs> and assists. <laughs> See, honey, it's addictive. It's also wow. uh, my career. Beautiful. Let's go. All right. Michigan Panthers, Philadelphia stars, stars laying six total sitting at 47 and a half. And again, I, I think there's a world where these bad teams just kind of go away. Um, you know, the Panthers, they've had some moments where they've looked fairly competent. They just figure out ways to lose. Uh, Reggie Corbin on the Panthers, he's been rushing the ball well, 516 rush yards. Um, stars have led up a ton of points, but they've also put up uh, a bunch of points. They've won two in a row. Kukas seems to be getting a little bit of mojo going. Obviously, a nice comeback against the Gamblers. They're actually tied with the Gamblers with most points allowed at 177. The blob rises. Um, you got to go stars here. I mean, the the six I guess is scary because I don't I don't think the Panthers are horrible, but man, they just figure out ways to lose. So I think taking them with the six is a is a tricky proposition. Kramer, what are you up to? When was it? When were you on vacation with the blob? What was that date? Ah, <sighs> in a couple weeks rough ago. E- rough estimate. Has uh, has would you maybe like May 18th? Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. So 2 and 0. The stars are <laughs> since that date. They're 2 and 0 against the spread. Um Colby, I don't know if we're fading that trend because uh, Michigan, we, we keep saying it, right? No, oh, they got a defense. Maybe they got a little, little bit of a defense. I don't know. They're also 100 to 1 in a league with eight teams where half the league makes the playoffs. 
And it's Jeff Fisher. Like, what? He's not really seriously giving a shit anymore. So you got to take Philly, right? No, look, in Blob, you Whoa. trust. Uh, but look, this is the game that Fisher missed the field goal, the 17 yard field goal. Oh, yeah, exactly. Like, We're in their heads. Yeah. <laughs> We own you, Panthers. Come at us. Anyone that watched that game would say, hey, the Panthers should have won that game. They were the better team, but they didn't because Jeff Fisher's, you know, a magician when it comes to losing games. But uh, six points is too much. The, the run game is going to be a, a problem for the Philadelphia Stars to stop. That is, our, that is their weakness. Yes. So I'm going to take the six. Uh, I know Fisher will find a way to lose the game. But, guys, if you're a Michigan Panther fan, the playoffs start now because – if they win, <laughs> if they win, they're alive. They're alive. This is the playoffs right now. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think you got to take the six. Also, I, I think we should <laughs> no, talk. No, you don't. <laughs> we should talk about that. How are these guys? I don't. The one thing I cannot wrap my head around is the kicking in the USFL. Like, I, I'm watching this highlight of the guy in the Panthers who hits a 60 yard field goal. How is this guy not in, uh, in the NFL? Like, I don't understand these you guys know what it is, Sean? can't hit 27 yarders are in the same league of guys hitting 60 yarders. It's insane. Uh, as a, as a special team specialist, uh, kicking specialist, I'm going to say it's like the long drive thing. You, you see a lot of, you know, you see the guys in the long drive tour, right? Big, strong, smash the ball. John a Zero accuracy. So yeah, maybe this <laughs> guy hits snow, the for Dale? Well, I, I, this guy is putting this in his Twitter bio. Let's put it this way. Once hit a 60 yarder in the USFL well, already and, in his Twitter bio. And when you fact, this is not the same kicker that made that missed that 17 yarder. I think no, that real, guy's been, they, they got rid of that guy. Yeah. <laughs> I think the real problem is, is that this league has been really bad at, you know, player personnel and, and judging talent. You see it with Bo Scarborough who's been on the bench. You know what right. I mean? Bo Scarborough I'm, comes in and looks like he's ready for the NFL. And it's like, this guy was just sitting there for six weeks. No one picked him up. So, so you're saying the coaches are bad in the USFL. Say, yes. It, 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 it's a classic example. You see it in the NFL. Yeah, I you know. See it, you see it all over. Russell Wilson was a fourth round pick. Why? I don't know. <laughs> Well, one of the, and the greatest quarterback of all time is what? Uh, six round out of Michigan? Lawn chair. Greatest lawn chair of all time. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't afraid to play for the team that drafted him, unlike John L.A. Moving over to the last game of the week, Houston Gamblers catching five and a half against the Tampa Bay Bandits. And this is a uh, – you want to talk about the playoff start. Wait, are the gamblers eliminated from the playoffs? I think they are, right? Because yeah, the only team that's eliminated. <laughs> I was gonna I was trying to do the math of the playoffs starting uh this week for the gamblers, but it hasn't. Um I don't know again. I, I'll be interested to see if that really matters. I don't think it will because these guys are just playing for literally their lives. Uh gamblers have lost five games this season by seven points or less, so they're great. Again, they are gamblers. They get up big and then they fucking blow it. Uh, Donald Payne of the Gamblers leads the league in tackles with 85. Uh, they they have some really good moments at times. The Gamblers, Bandits have lost two in a row. Man, you know what? I I uh, my heart says take the Bandits, but I really think the Gamblers could surprise people. This is just the league where the gamblers would win this outright, right, Colby? Am I am I crazy? What what's your take on this game? I mean, I'm gonna die hard on this hill. I mean, the gamblers uh. are actually are actually like, dude, they've had the lead in every game at halftime, and several leads in the fourth quarter or going into the fourth quarter. I mean, they're not that bad of a team. And like, yet, Colby, while we've we've complimented the two teams that are sitting at a hundred to one to win the. USFL championship, which is an absurd number for a team, a league with eight teams, half the league makes the playoffs, but guess, guess who's off the board. Guess who you can't bet on anymore. Well, the Houston gamblers, not, we had three weeks left in the season. You can't bet on them to win the title anymore. Only eight, only four teams don't make the playoffs. They should keep that on the board. So idiots would still bet it. <laughs> yes. We will take a hundred percent of the gamblers action. Well, and, and true gamblers would bet on the gamblers. I, I mean, uh, I'll, <laughs> I gotta, mm -hmm. I gotta take uh, Tampa Bay, even though I think there's, I'm not going to lock it up. Cause I do think there's a decent chance, 
Houston covers or wins, but I just can't take it because they're how bad they are in the second half. It's insane. And I don't know how, how deep the markets go, but if you can get some Houston gamblers first halves, especially on the money line, those things have just been a straight print fest. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. If you can find the first half, uh, they're the best team in football in the first half. Well, in, in this football, uh, Kramer, what do you got? Uh, what are you doing here? Are you going to roll the dice on the gamblers? I know you like throwing the dice, but I mean, I, I was, I was an early adopter of fade Sumlin. You guys talked me out of it for a, for a week, but yeah, we're back to fading Sumlin. And honestly, like it, it, you got to take a look at the quarterback, right? Um, this week with that, that gambler's defense, I don't know. To be, to be clear, I was not for someone last week. I, I had the stars lay in the four. That was easy. You got, you guys uh, together have a be, been all over the place when it comes to not being committed to fade someone I'm committed. So let's no, take I, I'm, I'm all in on fade someone. <laughs> this guy sucks. That's all you need to okay. know. And the, I mean, again, the second half falling apart, that's got to get in these guys heads at some point. Right? Yeah, definitely. I, I, I'm banking on the fact they made that switch from, from lawn chair, Clayton Thorson to Kenji Bahar. <laughs> Bahar looked all right. Give me, give me the gamblers as to, to get their second win when it doesn't matter. That I mean, yeah, nothing would shock me in this league. All right, we're gonna do a lock. We're gonna do a dog, and then we're gonna give out our DFS lineup. Before we do that, I want to shout out Athletic Greens. Oh man, I feel great. You know why? Because I started taking AG One. Helps me with my gut health, energy. Man, it's been. Uh, Again, just feel better. Great way to start your day. Just pour a glass of water, shake that AG1 up. 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to start your day right. Costs you less than 3 bucks a day. Again, you're doing something healthy. Uh, it tastes good. I mean, really, why don't you do anything healthy for your – or why don't you do more? Usually is because it tastes like crap or it's a pain in the ass. Neither are true with Athletic Greens, and that's probably why they have over 7,000 five-star reviews. Make that 7,001, because uh, throw in Sean Athletic Greens as well. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you got to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash SGP. That's athleticgreens.com slash SGP to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance Kramer kick things off lock or you know what we uh, we did bad on our locks and dogs even though I went three and one against the spread I did not hit my lock or my dog Colby we'll let you go first mix up the mojo we're going to lock up um we're gonna go with lock up the breakers breakers are the lock plus three and a half breaker break a one two slaughter Saturdays don't fail you much Sean so let's let's go with that for the dog. I'm going gamblers, baby. Plus two hundred. Sumlin gets that gets that first win. Uh, well, first fourth quarter win, I should say. I don't see it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> man, it's a big number, but Jesus, I watched that Mallers game. They are one of the more frustrating teams. Give me the Generals laying nine. Although you know what? No, fuck it. Let's go. Blob forever. Stars minus six is the lock. And for my dog, uh, Breakers plus 150. That's a nice little money line play against the Stallions who don't really need the game. Kramer, what do you got? Yeah, you got a lock. I'm surprised. You, you stepped in front of the train and then you you got back out of the way. Give me the Generals, baby. I, I missed out on winning with the Generals last week. Not this week. That's going to be a snooze fest. And yeah, I'm with you on the dog. I, I think. Stallions get a catch their first L. It's the breakers that, that get it done. Uh, plus one fifty. All right. Breakers, generals. It's, it's actually not a bad parlay. Throw the stars in there. Definitely want to avoid the gamblers. Colby, like a true gambler, just keep I have a system. It's always to pick the gamblers. What could go wrong week after week? Keep pounding it. You'll figure it out. All right. Let's talk uh it's like a little DFS. Mm. U S F L Kramer. I'll let you kick things off. What are you doing at the uh, quarterback spot? All right. So I, I have been sourcing my lineup uh, sustainably 
and uh, holy through our boy Jay Mark. Check out all his fine work at Sports Game. You know what, Ryan? Uh, oh, wait. I, do not do not speak over me, sir, because I'm already aware that you tried to to sn- to like a, like the like the fucking scumbag that you are, Philly trash. You know that I got a good thing going. So what do you do? You slide over and you say, "Hey, why don't you get me one too?" I see. Just, we're, we're, Justin Mark is playing himself in DFS via the podcast. So well, yes, I I and I yo know, Ryan. I don't know what you offered to tip him. Cause I said, how much is, how much is Kramer tipping you? And he said, tip, oh. uh, I didn't know. I didn't know there was tips here. I, I, apparently you're not, but, you know, maybe if he brings a taco truck over to your house, you'll give him 60%, but uh, well, he didn't, Sean, he, didn't, I didn't, he didn't make it seem like you were tipping him much. I didn't tip the guy after he served me a taco. I waited till the end of the night. The season still has three weeks left. Oh, you're come acting on. like a fool. Here's the play. The breaking news. The breaking news is I made my own goddamn lineup this wow. week, Sean. And I, uh, I'm, I'm trying out a new strategy. It's called motherfucking onslaught against the shittiest team in the league. Luis Perez, quarterback, 7,500. Let's go. Generals. Ooh. I'm catching all the generals points this week. Colby? I, I have Luis Perez. Look, we're at this point where, like, the quarterback play – Clayton Thorson's got benched and Bahars came in. Vad Lee got benched. So you don't know what's going to happen there. Uh, New or- I think the only other sure shot that's going to, you're going to get all your reps is Sloter Sundays or Saturdays and Kyle Sloter because the stallions, uh, Jamar Smith's completion percentage has kind of been kind of shitty. So they've been, they've been playing a uh, Magoo from Florida international. So I, the quarterback play, I think you got to go with the one guy that's not going to get benched. Uh, you know, so Luis Perez, <laughs> seventy five hundred. Great logic, by the way. You're not going to hear that on too many other DFS shows. <laughs> Give me uh, Jordan Tamu at home, priciest quarterback on the board, but he's at home going against his Gamblers defense. We've seen how bad this Gamblers defense can be. Colby kept trying to tell us, "Oh, the Gamblers defense not that bad. They just, you know, the offense puts them in bad spots." You saw. Kukas and the stars run buck wild in that comeback. Uh, give me the bandits quarterback, Jordan Tamu, 11,200. Tamu just threw three picks. There's a chance he <laughs> might not even, uh, he's going to get benched. He's going to get benched. What are you talking about? Come on. He's Jordan Tamu. He's an uh, XFL legend. Colby. Every time we say his name, I think of a, a killer whale every time. <laughs> Tamu. <laughs> All right, Kramer, hey, Jake. If you, if Jake could Photoshop uh, Jordan, oh, Tam- Jordan Tamu's Tamu. head on a whale, <laughs> free Willie scene Willy. where he's jumping the wall. That is be- uh, brilliant. Uh, anyway, maybe the blobs riding him. Uh, completely unrelated, but that's funny. Uh, all right. So uh, if you want to catch all the points for the best team in the league, you just play all their players. Trey Williams, ninety five hundred. They could score a million points against the Maulers. Pittsburgh sucks at everything. 9,500 running back for the generals. Not a horrible angle there. I'm going, uh, I'm going Bo Scarborough. I mean, this dude is a dog. He, he runs super hard. He's only 7,000. And I don't think uh breakers rush defense is, is really that good. Uh, especially Birmingham. They've had some issues at quarterback. I can see them leading on Scarborough even more. So yeah, give me Bo at 7,000. Bo knows USFL DFS, right? Colby different. Yes, yes, he does. And that's why I went with this Bo as well. Look, the first time they played the breakers, Bo Scarborough was sitting at home watching fucking Scooby-Doo. All right. So now he's here. He's, uh, you know, they haven't prepped for this. Bo Scarborough is going to have a big day against that breaker defense. Kramer. The breakers are a decent run defense uh, f- for the record. Are they not Colby? They have been one of the better run defenses, but nah, uh, come on. Yeah. They haven't faced a guy I, like I, Bo Scarborough. Uh, Sean, let me speak your language. Bo sure. Scarborough, you're chasing some chalk. I get it. He, he scored a bunch of points last week, 14 without a touchdown, but yeah, he's, you know, you're yeah. not, you're not one to chase. You're not one to chase Sean. No. Nah. Hey, no, this is a touchdown regression. He yeah, had a bunch right. of carries, a bunch of go. good looks. This is a touchdown uh, regression to the mean, as you would say, Ryan. 
See how I got you to a nice, strong analytical point? There well, you go. Thank that's you. an assist. All right, am I up? Yep. Who you got in the uh, first oh. re- receiver tight end? Uh, well, I mean, if if you're playing uh, to get all the points that the generals score, you want to play all their players. So we're going to go Cavante Turpin, yep. wide receiver, uh, a.k.a. gadget player for uh, my New Jersey generals, 8,600. I've spent a lot of money all on the generals so far. No, I also uh, I also got Turpin in there. He seems like the go-to guy. Me too. Uh, yeah, I mean, eighty six hundred bucks, and I uh, pretty much the receiver one, right? I know he didn't Sean, have a I'm, massive I'm game. I'm okay eating this chalk, Sean. This is uh, this is safe chalk to eat. I'm okay with the, the ownership's going to be high, but that's fine. Yeah, he wasn't as efficient as normal, but uh, I, I think he's due for a nice game. Well, that's Even, because he got injured. He had that yeah. hip fracture. Yeah. Is he is he is he a hundred percent though this week, right? I I, I mean, for, as far as I I've heard that he's he's a go to play, but uh, yeah, obviously something to monitor. All right. Seriously though, shout out to J Mark. This is how he responded to me. Hey, just got done mowing. <laughs> yeah, guys. I assume I assume he's not talking lawn mower four point but. All right. So am I up again? Is that how this works? Yes. All right. I, I had to play someone from another team. It doesn't actually allow you to play all players from one team. <laughs> so uh, I like the way the Stars offense has looked. I think uh, Kukis, he's fun. But Bug Howard, how do you not play him for 4800 right? Yeah, I had to, I had to save fun. some money. He uh, He's coming off a kind of a down week. So, uh, you know, he's got – he went – Four points, nineteen point six, two point nine. So boomerang time, touchdown regression play. I'm going to uh, Franklin the third, the receiver for Ooh. the Bandits. He's he got a bunch of targets uh, last week. Six targets, only one catch for twenty yards. But uh, they also involved him in the run game, and that one catch was a twenty yard touchdown. So I like the idea that he's going to get more catches. He seems like uh, one of the top options for the Bandits. He's also done okay um, on the return game. So we haven't seen a ton of these, but maybe a uh, maybe a kickoff return for a touchdown would be pretty sweet. And he's only forty three hundred dollars. I like that, if, uh, you know, especially going up against this gambler's defense. I think there's going to be a shit ton of opportunity. So, yeah, give me Franklin the third. Colby, what do you got? I'm going break a break at one, two here. The, the Birmingham Stallions give up yardage, and Jonathan Adams is the Harold Carmichael of the USFL. <laughs> this guy, he's big. He can catch the ball all over the field. $7,000. Give me the Arkansas State Red Wolf, Jonathan Adams. Wow, that is a great the Harold Carmichael of the USFL. All right, we're gonna close out our DFS lineup. Before we do that, I want to shout out IP Vanish. You know, whatever you're getting into on the internet, uh, looking up Harold uh, Carmichael stats, uh, whatever sort of deep dives Colby's getting into on the internet, your passwords, your security, you want to keep it all safe, secure. You can either hide, you can also hide your browsing location. You can do it all with IP Vanish. You get 70% off uh, the yearly price when you go to ipvanish.com slash SGP. Again, highly recommend using a VPN. We use it for God's eye, great at uh, hiding your location. Again, there's a million reasons why you want your internet security safe, your browsing history. You don't want people involved in that stuff. Go to ipvanish.com slash SGP. Kramer, close it out strong. What do you, what do you got? Who's your, uh, was this first flex, right? Uh, we, yeah, I have a first flex and I'm, I, I, I'm not, I had to play two non generals, um, to fit <laughs> the salaries and everything, you know, I'm not, not proud of it, but I had to go there. So I figured I'd stack the, the Michigan Philly game. Cause Philly's defense has been pretty trash. So uh, give me Reggie Corbin. Uh, again, it does seem profitable to play three running backs or as many running backs as you can possibly fit in the lineups because of how bad most of the quarterbacks are. But uh, anyway, yeah, so Philly's defense is that has given up points. Uh, give me Corbin, 6,300. Yeah, I'm going uh, to your point earlier, Ryan. I'm loading up on the running backs, putting Victor in there as well, the Generals running back, 7,600. Uh, they're nine point favorites. They're running the ball a bunch. And uh, yeah, I mean, the Mueller's defense hasn't looked horrible, but I think he could get some touchdowns. So I like the player at 7,600. 
<laughs> Are you not paying attention, Sean? How dare you? Uh, you know I was waiting to throw him out last as my fourth general's <laughs> offensive player and second. I forgot general's if you already player. included him in, in <laughs> your uh, your general's no, all all uh, onslaught stack. No, but he. I I also have him. I'm I'm uh, I'm handcuffing him and uh, Williams in the, in this lineup. I'm just going all in. I got him too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, come on. The bowling ball. I mean, this guy's great. Darius Victor, uh, you know, small school product. We saw that halftime report where he said, I just want to play football. I don't care where it is. I roster him every, just because of that halftime thing. <laughs> he's on my team every, every week. Uh, so Darius Victor, 7,600. I have one, I have one more offensive player. Are you guys on the same level here? Yep. Yep. Okay. One more. And then our defense, uh, Kramer, well, you go first. What do you got? It, it is Victor, right? Then? Well, I already gave him out. Yep. It was Victor. All right, my uh, last guy is a double stack for the the Bandits. Give me Cheyenne O'Grady. He is the red zone guy. Um, what do you have? A couple targets there, uh, two for 43. But, again, he, he seems to be the guy they're going to use in the red zone. And uh, I, I just like the matchup uh, against this gambler team. Like, I, I think this is a Jordan Tamu breakout game. So, I think load up on the pass catchers uh, with Franklin and O'Grady, and yeah, you're good to go. Colby, who's you, who do you got? Who's your last guy? I went Mark Thompson. He's had a couple shaky weeks, but it's always good when you play a team with a terrible run defense, and that's what the Tampa Bay Bandits are. So give me Mark Thompson at 8,500. I'm hoping that with Kenji Bahar behind, you know, under center, you know, they'll be able to have more success in the air, and then the dual threat of Bahar with his legs. They'll forget about Thompson a little bit. Maybe he gets off against the bandits. All right. Closing it out for defense. Ryan, I assume you're playing the general's defense at 5,500. What, what other defense would you play this week? <laughs> what do you want to save a couple bucks? Who's playing the Maulers at 3,300? That's what I want to know. I, I mean, yeah, this is insane. I also took the general's. You know, it's it's pretty obvious. I mean, again, the generals, what leading the uh, league in points allowed, but really, it's just fading this horrible, horrible Pittsburgh offense. Uh, great spot for them. So I, I I don't know, Colby, are you going? Are you doing anything but the generals? I didn't have enough money for the generals, so I had to oh, go. No. I had to ride the mustache, and I'm talking about Jeff Fisher. <laughs> oh you no! Know, he almost beat. He, he gave he gave the stars a hard time the first time, and then he you know obviously fumbled that opportunity. But the defense played really good against uh, Case Cookies, and I think though they they can dial it up again and, and really give them some problems. Uh, we might need Jake to change his Photoshop priority to Colby riding Jeff Fisher's mustache while the blob watches. <laughs> oh, come on. Blob doesn't go that way. <laughs> uh, I can see the blob as a cuck. Yeah. Uh, the that, blob actually, is right, one classic blob. Yeah, he's one big mustache. Of course he goes that <laughs> can way. Can we throw shark dog in there somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> we'll, have, we'll have to get him back on the show. I mean, Colby, uh, DM shark dog. Can we get a, can we get an injury report on shark dog from shark dog? Yeah. I will do that. I'm on let's it. Let's do that. Let's I, get, make sure. Let's make sure we get shark dog and uh Sloter's groin on the Photoshop. <laughs> All right. Jake's going to have his hands full this weekend. <laughs> Hey, uh, NBA Finals tipping off uh, tonight. If you're listening to this on Thursday, still a chance to get in on our NBA Finals prop contest. 500 bucks up for grabs, completely free to enter, exclusively on the SGPN app. Make sure you subscribe to the USFL Gambling Podcast and the College Football Experience. Individual team previews are here. Colby, when can people download the first uh, team preview? The best time of year, Sean. It will be, I would say, June 10th, June 11th. I mean, we're working on scheduling for guests. So <laughs> uh, I would say June 10th. Let's fire that away. All right. You can officially download the first episode of the previews June 10th. And uh, give us a nice rating review uh, for your chance to win free gear. Merch Monday, you can enter, uh, you know, take a little review, take a screenshot of you submitting it. You can hit contests in the app or go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Merch Monday for the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green, and he is, oh, wait, I almost forgot. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. And he is Ryan. 
Ah, June 10th. All right, got it. Kramer, let it ride.